Hello, and welcome to Bridging the Gap. I'm your host, Ty Johnson. Today we have a very special guest with us, Mr. Joe Eastman, who is Director of Veteran Affairs for Broad Street Ministry. Joe, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Joe, let's just dive right into mm -hmm. it. When we talk about veterans, mm -hmm. there's a myriad of problems mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. see, not only those soldiers who have fought abroad, but when they come home, they mm -hmm. have another battle mm -hmm. uh, that is unbeknownst to the public. To have you with on our show today, could okay. you share with us, uh, as the director of veteran mm -hmm. affairs, mm -hmm. what is it that you, you you do and what kind of things you might encounter? Well, I appreciate you having me here, and thank you for that question. Um, what I do as veteran, as the director of veteran services at Broad Street Ministry, is basically service any veteran that walks through the door. Uh, we don't ask any questions about anybody's background. We don't care what they did before. Uh, we're there to help. Um, and that could be a myriad of things. It's sometimes it's so much, as you probably well know, you're a profession, just sitting down and talking to somebody, maybe making a connection to a service that they didn't know about. We spend a lot of time, especially with the younger guys that come in and explaining what it is that their benefits are. Because we find a lot of times they don't know exactly what those benefits are. Uh, many times it's just helping somebody charge a cell phone. Because a lot of people just walking off the street, spend their day on the streets until they get to us. Um, most importantly, what I think we do is we provide a meal, a very good meal, healthy, satisfying meal, in a safe environment. Uh, we practice what's called uh, um, um, uh, radical hospitality, is what it's called. Uh, excuse me for that. It is radical. Um, you invite know, anybody in, there's no uh, metal detectors, uh, there's no background checks, uh, anybody's welcome to come in. And we, we service everybody. We probably feed maybe up to a thousand people a, a week. Not necessarily veterans, homeless people, people of low income means, uh, but about 10 to 12 percent of them are veterans. Now, in your work, the veterans that you might see throughout the course of a week, mm -hmm. uh, you see men, women, uh, people of different ethnic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. What seems to be a common thread of why we see so many veterans? I mean, we see the stories of the news or endless veterans who end up homeless. Could you share with us how, how does that dynamic happen? Sure. Well, we see uh, probably more men than women, although we're starting to see a few more women coming in. Um, we, we've worked with everybody from a 92-year-old World War II veteran to some men just coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, you know, everybody might will have their opinion as to what might cause these problems. I'll tell you the things that I see. And uh, I think if you were to ask somebody else, they'd probably tell you the same thing. Uh, a lot of the men, when coming back, suffer from PTSD. Uh, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder or something triggers a memory or something that they may have experienced that was not very nice. Uh, it did an explosion, somebody dying, something like that. Uh, there are men and women that have addiction issues, alcohol, drugs. The economy contributes to some of it. Uh, a lot of them are looking for jobs and can't find them or they're out of work, they've lost their job. Uh, so it's things like that. I mean, if you were asking what a common day was, you know, what would be your typical day, I couldn't tell you. Because it could be sitting having a conversation with somebody or trying to find somebody a place to sleep. If it goes that whole thing. Now, how did you get interested in this particular Are you a second veteran? Yes, I am. I spent 25 years in the Navy. When I was an enlisted man, uh, got a commission, retired. Um, I've always had an interest in veterans affairs. I was born to a couple of organizations. But it was just within the last six years that this opportunity presented itself. And I remember my first day there, I thought, my God, what did I get myself into? Uh, I went down with no expectations. And as I tell everybody, they looked at me out of there in a pine box. I didn't know leave. It was probably the most. I enjoyed my Navy career. I think that was very important. I did. This was the most satisfying. Hmm. Thing that I've done in my life and probably the most very long. And I consider myself very fortunate to be here. So I've heard people say if you work, you'll be tired, but if you find something you love, it's never work. It's not work. So your ministry, I don't like to call it that, mm -hmm. 
you see veterans on all circuits, mm -hmm. some who come to you with various needs. Mm -hmm. Is there something that the public should know about uh, dealing with veterans? Because most of us have veterans mm -hmm. in our family. Mm -hmm. Is there something we should know about mm -hmm. the delicacy of dealing with them? Or is there some way we can point them to the virtue of the Well, sure. I, that, that's a good question. Um, I think, first of all, there's, there, this is my opinion. There needs to be a recognition that a lot of times there could be issues hiding below the surface that maybe in some cases they don't, they're not aware of, or, or they just don't think there's a problem. I can remember when I was, say, their age, back in the day, so to speak, I would never admit that I had a problem because I thought I could work my, my way through it. A lot of times, there's an embarrassment in admitting that, that, that they have a problem. I think what, if you're asking about families in particular, what they could do is to just pay attention. Um, see, is, are there changes? Can you notice? Is there something that might be different about it? I mean, that's something I hear an awful lot. He's not the same person uh, that he was or he, she, or he or she was when they went away. And they can't necessarily, they don't necessarily, or able, and I'm not necessarily able to tell you what that means, but they just know there's a change. If there is, there are a myriad of organizations out there that, that people can go to. Certainly they can get a hold of me at Broad Street Ministry. There's, I mentioned a couple now, Philadelphia Veterans Comfort House, the Veterans Group, uh, the Veterans Multi-Service, and these are easy to find online or What, what's your website? Uh, www.broadstreetministry.com. Um, and we'll be glad to point them in the right direction. And I can tell you that, that working with these colleagues from various organizations, if we can't, if we don't have an answer, if we can't point something in the right direction, we will find a way to get them at least into a, a, a program or a, a, a service that would benefit them. There's no side to that coin that I'm learning. Uh, sometimes they have to be ready to do this. Um, and I'm often asked, well, geez, you know, why does somebody want to spend time on the street? I have no idea why that is. Um, some people have been out there a long time. They're not ready. I'm not necessarily, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert. I'm not a counselor or anything like that. I'm just a guy that works with veterans. But if there's something that you think you can do, act rather than don't act. Because that might be the, and unfortunately, and you know the statistics as well as I do, uh, a lot of these young men and women are committing suicide. We just had a young man uh, last week, two days before Thanksgiving, who frequented our organization quite a bit. Somebody that I got to know and consider a friend, hung himself two days before. Uh, and, uh, you know, Who knew? Who, who would have known? You would have never, you would never have known. But as my boss, Ed Conway, who's probably one of the smartest people I know in therapy and counseling and working with veterans, said, they were exactly, that's exactly the type that can do it, the ones you never even suspect. Um, these men and women, especially the ones that have seen combat in Iraq and Afghanistan, and to some extent, the, the older Vietnam veterans, have seen, the Vietnam veterans have seen some horrific things. You know, Uh, there's an expectation also, if I can add this, that you put men and women, young men and women, anybody, yes. in combat situations to where every sound could be a potential life-threatening situation. And then you tell them to come back to, the, to this country, the United States, and tell them about it. It's hard. It's hard. Um, so part of what I find most satisfying is the ability to be able to connect somebody with a service and then see some sort of positive outcome. There's no feeling like that for me. Wow, that is not for me. I, I'm sure people who come to the Bullshit Ministry will appreciate uh, the work that you do. Is there a phone number if somebody wanted to call? Somebody can call me directly. So I give my cell phone number out and they'll come to the 609-290-8803. 609-290-8803. If I can't do it myself, I can connect them to some place at Broad Street or through any other organizations that I mentioned, or in some cases to be in, if, that ha if they've not uh, used that as an option before. Now, as a veteran yourself, uh, we just recently celebrated mm -hmm. uh, Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure as a special meeting, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in the program, because my father also 
was a regiment of the Second World War. And I know some of the stories and some of the things that he experienced were just, you know, mind boggling. But as a veteran, I don't think those of us who are civilians, so to speak, we don't always get a full grasp of what it is that you guys have experienced uh, on the battlefield or abroad. But is there any way that we can heighten the communication between both civilian and veterans? Because some veterans will come out and they may not talk to their family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The families don't know what's going on. They just may know that the attitude has changed or the loss of appetite that they may mm-hmm. know. But well, how do we heighten that communication so that we can begin to take proactive steps? Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things that you're starting to see now is that the VA and various organizations or government organizations are reaching out to various churches because they uh, see these young men and women coming back uh, quite often as well. I, I would just say this. Um, these are not monsters coming back. And sometimes the press will think it is such. These are men and women who, for God love them, went and served their country and did exactly what their country asked them to do. And we're going to hold that for right there. We're going to be right back. Don't you go away. We'll be right back. you to say things and do things that you really wish you hadn't, because that's what you're supposed to say. Yeah. So if any of your buddies ever pressure you to take a drink, just tell them you promise you're going to do one. And do anything to keep you safe. Okay. Well, I'm just sorry. I promise. Well, you too, Dad. They really do hear you, Brian. Yeah. So start the conversation even before they're teenagers. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsung.com. A message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. treated for breast cancer. We planned for life after breast cancer. We made the choice. The breast cancer would not take something away from us. Unfortunately, not every woman has her choices. The American Society of Plastic Surgeons is supporting the Breast Cancer Patient Education Act, a bill that will help make sure women who are facing breast cancer surgery are told about all their options. Help bring this important issue to life. Call the member of Congress and ask them to support the Breast Cancer Patient Education Act. Hello and welcome back to Bridging the Gap. I'm your host, Todd Johnson. We have a very special guest with us today, Mr. Joe Eastman, who is Director of Veteran Services at the Broad Street Ministry. Uh, Joe, at the top, would you just give that number out again? It's 267. Uh, my, my, my cell phone number is 609-290-8803, 609-290-8803. If somebody has a question or wants to refer or looking for a potential just service, get a hold of me. I'll be glad to help. And that website address again, www.bradstreetministry.org. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so anybody viewing this program who may have a veteran in the home, or a veteran may be viewing this program, mm-hmm. it's important for them to get that information. Now, as you were saying, at the, right before we went to our commercial break, the rate of suicide uh, in the veteran community mm-hmm. seems to be epidemic. Mm-hmm. Could you explain to us, civilians, as to why it seems to be such a high, large rate 
I don't know exactly the answer to that. I, I would just tell you that, in my opinion, somewhere the system, however that's defined, has failed. There's no way. It's not their fault. Um, and I don't know what it is. I mean, I think it goes back to maybe some of the things we talked about, the PTSD and things such as that. But at some point, they have felt that something couldn't help them. Right? And what I consider part of my job, what I love, is the advocacy part. It's screaming hard about this to everybody who will listen. That this is happening, and we need to stop it. Um, for example, now this is my opinion on the in cities such as Philadelphia with the world class medical facilities that we have here, right? Any veteran, especially if there's a mental health issue, has to wait any period of time for care it is, is a shame. It, it's a standard to me. It's, it's the odd thought. Because mm-hmm. we do have great medical facilities here. Absolutely. However, I think that some. When I hear veterans, I, I mentioned, I alluded to earlier about veterans day. Mm-hmm. Uh, that day seems to escape a lot of us, and it's just a day, like mm-hmm. a holiday, the banks day. What veterans day mean to you, personally? Well, it gives me a time to reflect. Um, my father was a veteran, just like yours, you know, talking about this. World War II in the Pacific Theater. Um, it, it just gives me a time to reflect. There's actually two days that are very important to me. Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Certainly Memorial Day to remember those that have passed and made the, the ultimate sacrifice. And, and Veterans Day, it's a time for me, for me personally to reflect uh, 25 great years mm-hmm. that I was in. What it meant to be. Um, but to, to kind of to your point, I think in Philadelphia here, more so than in, in many other cities, um, where it has been, I think, maybe just another day off for people. I've always found Philadelphia to be a very veteran-friendly city. Yeah. I think we're very, very fortunate here. We have a city council that gets it. We have senators, or both our state senators, or the United States senators, uh, Senator Tim and Casey, are superb relative to veterans affairs. In, in this area, the southeast of Pennsylvania area, the congressional delegation, they're there for us. I think the media is out there for us. Uh, would it be like, would it be what we would, would hope it would be? Probably no, but I would tell you, for a non-military town, this is as veteran-friendly a uh, uh, city as I've been in. I think this past Veterans Day, I, I went to four celebrations, and there could have been more on the list, but we just ran out of time. So, uh, But I think people need to just take a little bit of time on Veterans Day and remember what those men and women that have gone and served uh, have done for this country. I mean, we can sit here and complain about things all day long, but you know, we've got it pretty good compared to a lot of other countries, and a lot of it's because of the men and women we're really in the For me, uh, which is the takes on the question of you, but when I think about the services that your agency provides, there is a battleground and another fight when the veterans come back from their field of battle that's often not talked about. The PTSD, the, the loneliness, mm-hmm. the isolation, the abandonment mm-hmm. that they may experience. Mm-hmm. Could you just kind of expound on that? Because I, I'm sure that the veterans who you minister to, mm-hmm. you, you find these problems. Well, it, it's interesting. I, I can remember back when I retired. I retired in 1996 after 25 years. I remember that first six months. I was thinking, so this is the civilian world that I left. And uh, I remember one day, um, waking up and saying, okay, now what am I going to do? But I was very fortunate. I had a, a, a good support system for me. Not today. And I, I think even those men and women who, who, who suffer uh, PTSD and things such as that, many of them have good support systems. I think it's incumbent upon all of us. I think we have to get out there. We have to pay attention. One of the things, and I've, I've had to learn this over the six years that I've been at Broad Street, is to listen for some things. Um, uh, maybe pay attention a little bit more. Um, as you and I were talking at the break, the vast, vast majority of our men and women come and have a fine. They're okay. There's that percentage. And it's that percentage, wherever they are, and who knows when they present themselves, that we need to pay attention to and do whatever it is we can to, uh, to uh, get them some help if they need it. 
And if, if, if somebody feels it's overwhelming to them, call me, call one of the other organizations. We'll take it from there and we'll try to work with that family. Uh, but I, I would also say this, and this is, a, again, a personal opinion of mine. I'm not sure if you can push it. I just don't know. I don't know if that causes as much problem or anything else, but one of the things the military is doing a lot better now, we're making these men and women more aware of what's available for them coming back. That is something, and I'm sure it's happened throughout the country, we veterans of Philadelphia have really been pushing that. These transition assistance programs need to be better. Uh, when, when I retired, you know, basically it was kind of on my own. You know, you know, I guess I was going to be able to figure it out, but... Uh, it's kind of overwhelming, no matter how nice, you know, all the time I spend it. It's overwhelming when you come back. You know. In the homeless rate, mm -hmm. uh, among veterans, mm -hmm. there have to be several, uh, a few, of really good uh, housing programs mm -hmm. available for mm -hmm. the veterans, and especially those who find themselves uh, out in the street mm -hmm. who, who want to come out of sure. the street. Sure. Uh, is there something you can suggest? Sure. I, I, there, I think there's several. I think that... Uh, Project Home is very good. Uh, they have a very strong veterans component there. We, we of course, we really don't deal with the housing part of it just by the nature of what we do, but we can connect people with programs. Veterans Multi Service Center, the perimeter of which I think a lot of veterans are aware of, it is very, very good. Uh, Philadelphia Veterans Comfort House. Uh, it, the VA, you know, if nothing else, I mean, you, you'll do all kinds of stories and, you know, whether or not they're true, who knows. But if I was a young veteran, or if a young veteran presented himself, I'd say, get up to the VA, get evaluated, <coughs> get with one of those counselors, let's see what you're one of, one of the, if for any veterans that might be listening, especially the younger guys, you have more benefits than you think. It's a misconception that you have had to retire from the military, spend as much time as I did in order to get benefits. Now, our benefits are a little bit different because I did more time. But if you have an honorable discharge or general discharge, um, you're going to be fine. Get up there and find out what you're entitled to. Because if you don't do that, you're going to, you're going to work. Well, I, I see this from veterans every day. They've missed out on years. Just education benefits. And just the education benefits because they didn't know. They didn't ask. I, I remember uh, around the Second World War when those guys came home, they had the GI Bill. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them took a job at the school. Absolutely. Start businesses. Sure. sure. So uh, I, I salute yourself and many other veterans who come out back into civilian society and, and have done well. Because I, I look at your track record since '96, and you've done quite well to make that adjustment. I'm sure there are a lot of veterans who have, but we tend to focus on those who you know, have had problems, and, and it just seems like it, you hear story after story of veterans who just. Uh, were not able to reacclimate themselves mm -hmm. uh, into the mainstream society and uh, uh, help us out to them. Mm -hmm. What do you say to those families who say, hey, hey Joe, my, my sister or my brother or my uncle or my aunt just doesn't seem to be able to, to make that adjustment? You say to them, go to the VA and start there instead of to start. Well, I would tell them, first of all, that your, your son or your daughter is a very special person just for what they do. Uh, and we owe them something. Uh, if, if somebody were to come to me, I would, I would say, well, what is it you think that I can do? Because we've actually, I've actually had those types of conversations. Um, if they were willing to come in and talk, we have some excellent counselors at Forest Field Ministry that can sit down. So I, I think some of them are. Um, I've taken people up to the VA if they think it might be a little bit intimidating. Right. We've had people come to us. There is not one set prescription for how to do this. There may have been at one time, but what I think you're finding now relative to a lot of people who are working in the veterans field right now, there's kind of an entrepreneurial attitude now. But like, for example, I had a gentleman that was in his 60s. Well, he was kind of, he was okay. He just, we sent him to the Philadelphia Senior Center. Now he's, he's eating twice a day. He's taking part in activities. You know, 20 years ago, would anybody have done that? No, but it's just another tool and resource that's out there. Right. And we have a pretty good network of veterans in the city that if one of us doesn't know how to do it, we can get a hold of somebody that does. But I would just say contact us. Contact the VA. The VA can, can help you. Uh, but just don't assume that there is no help there. There's an incredible amount of help in Philadelphia for veterans now. 
more so than, in, in fact, many, many uh, military towns that I know of. This is, if you've got to be somewhere, Philadelphia, I think, is the place to be. Right? It's great to hear. That is great to hear because some of these programs may be able to find the help that they need or help for the love for me. I'll connect them with somebody. I promise you that. Uh, after the, we don't get to thank you for the service that you have provided for our country, but I, for the program, I just wanted to thank you not only for the service that you provided when you were touring the Navy, but the service that you provide now. Uh, I think it's just equally as important uh, ministering to uh, the veterans who put so much need help and need your services. You're doing an outstanding job, uh, a gentleman's job, and you may not always get the accolades of credit, but you are doing an outstanding job. So I, I salute you uh, and tonight to just let you know I'm, I'm very proud to have you on our program. Uh, and I'm blessed to say that I, I know you. So well, thank you very much, Reverend Johnson. I would just tell you that it's programs like this that help us do the work that we do. Thank you very much for having me. Well, we appreciate you and keep up the great work. That's Broad Street Ministry, Joe Eastman, a great guy, Director of Veteran Affairs. Again, I'm Todd Johnson. When one's on the right, another's on the left. When we reach towards the middle, we begin to bridge the gap. Until next time, love somebody and be nice to everybody. Bye for now.